There's been an uptick in different thought leaders, podcasters, influencers, entrepreneurs, artists becoming more Jesus curious as of late. Now, despite what Bill Maher is saying here, the fastest growing religious group in the United States are nuns. When asked how much they want to be involved with a religion, say none. We see massively influential people repeatedly asking the right questions about Jesus. Now, what could all this mean? Is this all for self-interest? Is it just for interesting conversations? Or is God potentially moving an influential people's heart cross media? And is there anything as Christians that we can do to seize this opportunity? But first, check out this clip from Jordan Peterson, who, though he's been exploring the Bible for a long time, has also confessed his own struggles with the bodily resurrection of Jesus. I want to ask you why you became a Christian. Like, okay, well, you went to Yale and you're in the English department. That was before you had a conversion. What happened to you? What happened in the conversion and why did you switch your tune? Around my 25th birthday, uh, I had a dramatic, miraculous dream uh, in which, in a nutshell, God spoke to me so unequivocally that there was no going back. It was game over. I, Can you tell I, me, would you tell me the dream? Now, we're going to look at what Eric Maddox's profound, prophetic, borderline, spooky, supernatural dream was. But first, let me show you a couple other examples of people asking similar questions or making very similar statements like this time where joe rogan wasn't pressed on christianity but prompted viral singer oliver anthony to share his encounter with god and what led up to him surrendering his life to jesus if you can take us to like what was like the day you picked it up what what was the feeling that you had like what caused you to act what what was it like when you did it i just felt hopeless like like almost the way a child feels hopeless when they, you know, like you can't find your parent or something, like a, like a four-year-old that can't find his parents or something. I was just like, just didn't have anything left in me. And um, we all serve, we all serve some master, whether we realize it or not. So why not let it be the master that is above all? And so when you made this transformation in your mind, did you then start reading scripture like regularly? Like what did you start doing? I don't read it because I feel like I should read it to be a better person. It's like now I, I try to read it for the guidance within it. Now it's crazy hearing Joe Rogan ask those questions considering his past hostility towards Christianity. Now speaking of hostility towards Christianity, someone in the past who's repeatedly mocked Jesus and is allegedly a part of the Illuminati cult, Jay-Z, who recently made a business decision that could potentially platform the message of Jesus to millions. And no, I'm not talking about his Book of Clarence movie. But first, let's look at this clip from Elon Musk. There's great wisdom in what in, in the teach, teachings of, of Jesus, uh, and I agree with those teachings. You know, if, if, if Jesus is, is uh, saving people, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't stand in his way. You know, like, they'll be sure. I'll be safe, why not? Now, believe it or not, this clip ended up causing a lot of controversy because Babylon B ended up asking Elon Musk if he would accept Jesus into his heart, leading many to speculate if they were mocking the gospel and someone getting saved, or if Elon seemed to be genuine in being more open to following Jesus. While it's pretty obvious that Elon Musk probably didn't accept Jesus in that moment, what is important to note is that he clearly said he would not get in the way of the things of Jesus. Another influential and massively successful podcast came this past week as Patrick Bedavid sat down with YouTuber Graham Stephan for the Ice Coffee Hour and was asked specifically about the role that God plays in his life. I notice God is a topic that comes up frequently with you. What role does God have in your life? And do you think that everybody needs a relationship with God to some capacity or could some exist without a relationship with God? Everybody has a God. Okay, my God for from 14 years old to 25 was women. Now beyond PBD's disruptive answer that everybody has a God, whether or not you believe in the true God depends on you. What I found most intriguing is that these questions are being asked. The answers are all different. Yet the right questions about who God is and who Jesus is are being asked by some of the biggest independent platforms in the world, which I think is a net positive. Now, one person who's arguably done more harm than good to the spreading of the gospel is Jay-Z. In one of his biggest songs, Empire State of Mind, he rapped, Hail Mary to the city, you're a virgin, and Jesus can't save you. Life starts when the church ends. 
But despite seemingly blasphemous lyrics, he may be turning this around. And again, I'm not talking about the Book of Clarence movie that he's producing. He recently signed an overtly gospel artist named Victory Boyd, who recently appeared on the Today Show. Check this out. Well, in 2017, she released her debut solo EP after signing to Jay-Z's Rock Nation label. And now she's out with her first gospel album. It's called Glory Hour. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. I was reading about your writing process with this album. You call it freedom writing. Yeah. What yeah, does that yeah. mean? Yeah, well, freedom writing to me is where you find security in the Holy Spirit of God. Okay. And you just express whatever comes. Now, it's important to note that airtime time on the Today Show is probably made possible by Jay-Z's Industry Connects. But it doesn't stop there. Victory Boyd also sat down with my friend Tim Ross for a four and a half hour interview exploring her faith, how she got signed to Jay-Z, and her hopes and dreams to help spread the gospel using her gift of music. So obviously this isn't Jay-Z professing the name of Jesus, but he is using his dollars and resources to further someone's career who is professing the name of Jesus. Sounds a lot like Elon Musk, who are saying that he wouldn't get in the way of whatever Jesus is doing in people's lives. Now, as promised, we're going to come back to this prophetic dream that was shared with Jordan Peterson by Eric Menaxis. But before we get there, I just want to say a couple of things. One, I'm not saying that celebrities being Jesus curious has any direct implication on us. But what I am saying is how we live our lives as followers of Jesus can have a direct impact on people who we have influence over that may not know Jesus. Jesus, how we treat others, how we are diligent in our careers, how we love and lead our families. All of these different things create intrigue, believe it or not, by people who may not know why we behave this way and then want to ask who is behind it? What is the motivation? And it gives us the opportunity to point people back to what Jesus has done in our lives. Now, while you and I may not be in the same circles as a Joe Rogan, a Jordan Peterson, an Elon Musk, or a Jay-Z, what Jesus did say about you and I is that we are the light of the world, like a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. Now, the beautiful part about being the light of the world is that it often creates intrigue and allows us to go deeper in sharing our faith with other people. And a great part about how good our God is, is that he could use us and meet people right where they are, as he did with Eric Manaxis. Check out this clip. In the dream, I'm standing on a frozen lake, Candlewood Lake in Danbury, Connecticut. I'm ice fishing with friends and I look at the hole in the ice and I see what you never see if you're ice fishing. I see a fish pointing its snout out of the hole and I look at it and I reach down and I lift it up by the gill and I see that because of the sun, it looks golden. Suddenly in the dream, I realize, no, it, it doesn't just look golden, it is golden. It is a golden fish made of gold, like in a fairy tale, but it is alive, a living golden fish. And in that moment in the dream, God effectively drops this into my head, like in paragraphs. I knew this is God saying to me in this dream, you wanted to drill through the ice to touch inert water, to touch the collective unconscious, the divinity, the Godhead. I have something else for you. I have the golden fish, ichthys, Jesus Christos Theos Imon Sotir, my son, your savior, Jesus Christ. How did you know that, well, why did you make the association between the fish specifically at that point and Christ? Well, did that I, happen in the dream? You, no, that's what I'm saying. It happened in the dream. I yeah, knew no, but the in realization the dream, took place in the dream too. The realization took place within the dream. The next day I went and I told the friend of mine at work the story. I said, I had this dream. And he says, well, what do you think it means? And I, I never would have said these words. These words would have made me cringe at any previous day. I said, it means I've accepted Jesus. Listen, ultimately us being the light of the world and being in positions where other people are intrigued by our faith and ask these sorts of questions is going to come down to us living a life of overflow, an overflow from our connection with the creator. Everything from our daily pursuit of reading the scriptures, being in a local church community, and prioritizing prayer. And one of the ways I've been able to implement prayer in a way where I can reflect and see the tangible hand of God answer my prayers is by writing out my prayers. Now you could do this in your notes app on the phone or just grabbing a blank journal. We've put together a physical copy with the exact prompts that I've used, specifically daily options to pray for other people in your life that maybe don't know Jesus. And I wanna encourage you, try journaling your prayers. Let's 
let's create a prayer movement. And to remove any barriers of cost or anything like that, we've put together the PDF version of our prayer journal for you completely free. Go to blessgodpdf.shop to download yours right now. Or you can click the pinned comment below to get the PDF as well. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.